Deputy drops royalty shares in Rihanna's bitch better have my money. Now, what exactly does this mean? I'll read through it. All right. So the company, another block is reviving up to drop shares. No, it's revving up to drop shares. And yet another iconic track. The royalty NFT platform is working with Maverick producer named Deputy to grant fans access to a portion of his streaming royalties from Rihanna's bitch better have my money. In his very first NFT project, starting at 5 p.m. tomorrow, just a few days before Rihanna's long-awaited Super Bowl halftime show, people will be able to buy it. Now, the purchase price was about like $210, if I remember correctly. I don't and, know that, yeah. yeah, there we go. With the platform offering 300 NFTs at $200, so that's something to come back to, a piece with each giving holders a portion of 0.0033% of streaming royalties. Bitch Better Have My Money is, of course, on one of another block's biggest drops. That's a weird name. Another block's biggest drops, less than six months. So let me just summarize this because they got a lot of weird word in here. At the end of the day, this guy owns his portion of the song. He was the producer of the beat, right? The fact that he was able to give this very small portion, because I bet he still owns plenty of it, yep. right? But then create this branding idea around it. Use Rihanna's name, like you mentioned earlier. But still provide value to the fans is something that shows why this is significant. Because if you matter to your fans, something like this is still going to be meaningful. Like, I would have bought this for myself. And I probably would have got one for my girl. Just say, hey, yeah, I know you love Riri. I got you a little ownership of her, her song. You, yeah. know what I mean? you know how people buy stars and stuff like yeah. that and name it after? <laughs> like, I got you some of Riri's song. A little investment, man. Yeah, a little saying? investment, girl. A little <laughs> investment. Now, that being said, it would take about 15 years to make your money back with the estimates. The projection was like, I think, what was it? Was it 15? No. So you would make 6.5% each year on that investment based on current streaming projections. So that's around $13 per year. Take about 15 years to make that $210 back. So it's less of an investment, more of a sentiment. Yeah. Right. But that's what I think a lot of the conversation around NFTs will have to be in the future. It has to be more sentiment than investment and most of the problem around the scam culture etc is getting people to see it as money like oh yeah this is gonna be an investment you get uh you buy this from me and then you're gonna be able to sell it at that next value and everybody's coming in for that and that's what creates the gold rush mm -hmm. mess around and find some pyrite instead of gold get rich fast culture that ultimately ends up crashing it ends up in a lot of unhappy broke folks so switching i like this to this idea where they even map out clearly hey it's gonna take 15 years to make your money back that takes away that idea of someone thinking about it that way yeah right it's like hey do you want this just to have a piece of this moment in time one of her biggest tracks maybe yeah. your favorite track from rihanna or just you know a piece of your favorite artist that type of conversation i think will have lasting value in an in a nft space yeah yeah i agree because that was always kind of the thing with me with the NFT space was everyone was, like you said, selling their NFT as like a gold rush. Like, hey, you know, hold on to it and then X amount of time you'll make X return on it. But just because I bought a couple of NFTs and personally, my favorite NFTs are the ones that like, I don't really see any like value or like growth of value from. It. I just like them. Right. And I view them almost as 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 like a collectible. Right. No different than me buying some exclusive merch item from the artist or some t-shirt or like tour item or something. So I look at NFT like that. And to your point, like you said, I think this will be what makes NFTs even more approachable on like a consumer side. Cause there's still like a lot of consumers for so all the artists that have been pushing it um, and, and still trying to push it. They have to realize they're in the bubble and there's still a lot of general consumers who just are super skeptical of it. I know because yes. I was just I was talking to one yesterday. So it's this conversation. Really? Yeah. Fresh <laughs> in my head, bro. I got a yeah. got a got a got an art homie. Um I just hate the ideas of NFTs and what it's doing to the visual art community. It's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? But those people still exist. So it's gonna take things like this where it's like, hey, I do see the sentiment of value in this. 
to get me over that this is a scam hump so that I can then buy it to then see like, oh, this isn't that bad. You know what I'm that goes back to Twitter, right? Because you mm-hmm. want to shine these success stories. Yeah. So the artist Three Loud dropped in 2021. He raised about $16 million, mm-hmm. right? From him, from this type of process. And he since paid out $132,000 to fans, you know? So that sounds good. Now, how many fans that's spread across? I don't know. But it sounds good to share those big numbers, yeah. and it makes it sound attractive from all sides, right? The fan, the artist, et cetera. And when I say Twitter and bring that in and why they why they want to find that star, like what you said, mm. is because when you have that star to say, this represents us, this is us, it inspires other people to try, right? It's the marketing. Yeah, you, know, you want to call it the pyramid or something. Yeah. It is like, all right, yeah. if I can say you could be successful, it's America, the American dream. Yeah. Everybody yeah. believes they can do it. And then at some point, you know, you have a lot of people who aren't doing it, but they're at least committed to the dream. Yeah. And they're right? still building the, the perception of it like, by even trying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They're showing it could be done, which mm-hmm. means now that it's, it's not their fault or the system's fault, it must be your fault because some people are doing it. It's that entire scheme, yeah. right? Yeah. Which... You know, look, I get it, right? So that's kind of what the NFT world did at scale, and it's still going to do that in some ways. But if people could focus a lot more on the value from a from just the like I said, sentiment, the value of the art itself, yeah, then I think people would be better. The art and the artist, because like you said, maybe you literally just like this why the hell do you buy prints and you put on your wall because I, I fuck with it yeah you don't yeah. do that like a picasso and say oh this is an investment most art that people buy is because they like it and they don't expect a return on it but nft brought that conversation in because of course you know there's nothing that triggers people outside of like fear and violence it like mm-hmm. the potential to make some money yeah right so i i get how it got to where it is and I know that it was intentional. It was definitely intentional. But there is still going to be utility. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you. And it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Before we switch to this next topic, which is really, really good topic because artists, record labels, there's still a lot of struggle. And we're going to share a snippet of an artist basically straight up saying she got shelved, how and why it affected her career. Before we get to that, I want to get a little bit of a tidbit from you of that artist saying NFTs are messing up the visual artist community. I want I want to understand his argument. I mean, I don't completely understand the argument because let me let me think back to it. Pretty much, they felt like the NFT space in terms of art is controlled by like elitist artists, okay. right? Those artists who come from wealthier backgrounds for whatever reason have the money to invest in the way man it sounds like the stuff you need to put out nfts and i don't know a lot about putting the nft out um i haven't been following the space super heavy but i personally don't feel like the process is like super super difficult from what i've seen on like open sea and a couple of different places that like have these templates and walkthroughs that break it down for you so that argument was the the competition with elitists you know which mm-hmm. i think from a creation standpoint they don't have a point i think from a marketing put it out that respect that standpoint the, most yes. of the nfts that do do great the, the people behind it back and they got money right play. it is like a circle jerk between yeah. a group of friends essentially in yeah. most cases yeah and then other than that like i said i didn't really get the argument because the rest of the argument was like oh what's my still my work like, what's my still your work you make now people still art now you know what i'm saying yeah. so that don't change nothing um, something along the lines of not respecting like traditional cultures. I was like, we had digital artists 
for at least tw- two decades at this point. Niggas still buying paintings and drawings and shit yeah. off the street. You know something? Like, that's not true. And what was the last thing? I think the last thing was just more about like spreading artists out across different mediums. Like he felt like, you know, the world is trying to force artists to learn these different mediums when that shit it's just crazy as I'm saying this out loud. It's a music artist argument. It's actually wild, bro. That's it just, what it I was going to say. It just clicked with me. But like, yeah, like they're like, it's forcing them to have to learn all these different mediums when they just want to be artists and create. I'm like, it's, it's always going to be the world. You know what I'm saying? We've already talked about <laughs> this. We've already talked about this. And I'm glad. And I'll ask you this because I wanted artists to hear other artists. Yeah, say Right? In yeah. other spaces say <laughs> that exact same thing the arguments that they're making everybody feels this way yeah so it's not just y'all don't feel attacked because you can go in another space and you'll probably feel just the same Same, or somebody is gonna feel the same about you going into their space everybody has a complaint that's not something that can be focused on but i think the argument for the idea of elitists or these communities that are in the know is fair but that also dissipates the rest of the argument because it's like yo well if these people are focused here, that means most of the people that have to do with your audience probably aren't even in this space. Mm-hmm. So keep performing as normal. Yeah, that's you argument. Know what? That's you know what's forcing you to get on there right now. Yeah, to me, it came back more so to the argument of community because it's like, well, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, like I said, if you want to be doing tens of millions off your NFT, yeah, you're gonna you you now you bumping shoulders with some people who got some serious money. You just want to sell. 15 collectibles to your your audience that likes your shit like that's not going to affect anything you have going on you know like none of your audience can be like oh i sure wish i could get that collectible artwork but i just dropped 25 bands on the nft last night like that's probably not your audience you know what i'm saying yeah. saying those things and doing that thing so yeah. there's still this growing group of people who you can capitalize off of and some of them who you can only capitalize off of because they're only thinking about it because you're doing it you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's what got me into NFTs were like, there were specific artists and not even just music artists, but like visual artists and music artists that I liked that I saw doing NFT projects that made me go like, okay, let me like figure this space out. Like my first NFT was a um, print from this artist from Atlanta, uh, that's from Atlanta that I like, you know what I'm saying? I buy a lot of his stuff. So I w- I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't out here dropping 50 bands on the NFT, but he got me, you know what I'm saying? He got me to spend like, I think I maybe bought his NFT for like $300 or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that was the argument that I made to the art homie. Like, yo, if you've done all the things that we tell you to do, or you no, know, people like me tell you to do, and you've built a community, nothing you just said matters. Now, if you haven't done any of those things, then all of that stuff does matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're right. Like now, now you're trying to. It's the to me, it's the same argument of like the underground artist wanting to compete with the major label artists, right? Like you're looking at all the resources they have access to, all the things they they could possibly get done. And you're thinking like, oh, I can't do it unless I'm able to either do it at that level or be able to compete with somebody at that level. But right. to your argument, it's like, no, because they have this whole area up here captured and no one's focusing on all the people down here. That means that there's room for to make money off all the people down here because all these people are looking up at this thing and that's making them want it even more. You know what I'm saying? So you even benefit, but they can't afford that thing. Right. Like I said, all of us saw. Was that the the eight NFT that was going crazy at some point? Everybody in the world saw that shit, bro. Like yeah. everybody saw that. Everybody, a lot of people didn't have money for that shit, but that made a lot of people interested in NFTs that would now go like, okay, cool. I'm not dropping a meal on a picture of a monkey, but I'll go give my favorite artist, Lou, who whatever, fifty dollars for this NFT or some exclusive cover art he put out, right? Or like I said, the artist I like, I'll go pay three hundred for this exclusive NFT print of some shit he's not making in real life, right? Same, same shit, you know? Let me ask you this. Okay. There's a popular car that has stars okay. on top. You know what car I'm talking about? Yeah, I do know what car you're talking what's, about. What's it called? Is it, damn, they just put me on the spot, bro. The Rolls Royce? Is it the Rolls Royce? No, it's not the Rolls Royce. It's the, um, I don't know, man. I don't know the name of it. I just know it. <laughs> They gonna put me on the spot, bro. They gonna blew my whole spot up, bro. They gonna. They gonna what you mean? They gonna, I can like, never claim to be a car and through. I can never flip that brand and even try to play it off like that. You, you, you are here. I'm gonna I'm I'm put them on the screen. All right. No car sponsorships for me. I, I, <laughs> no car brand deals. <laughs> oh man, but it's the, it's the most popular rap car there is. Bro. I that's what I'm saying. As soon as you said, I'm like, oh, duh. But I cannot think. You got of, some of it right. It's just that you just didn't say, you said the brand, you didn't say the name. All right, this is where your confusion came in. So it's, it's not just the, the Rolls, uh, it's all the Rolls Royce, it's actually multiple. Okay. Right? So the Phantom, okay. the Wraith, and the Ghost, which 
The ghost, I actually personally, like, I'm not the biggest car. Like when it comes to Rolls Royces, I actually don't like none of them. So, but I, so I never quite understood what the ghosts, like what made that one so special. But anyway, the whole point of it, right? So what's that car called? Many people know it, but it's the Rolls, Rolls Royce brand. People see this car. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a Chrysler 300? Mm-hmm. Use that same model, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, are you familiar with Gucci? Are you familiar with Louis? There's levels above that for those who don't know. Mm-hmm. But then there's also Coach. There's also Guess. Mm-hmm. There's all these other brands. That ladder exists for a reason. Yeah. Right? And that's the point you're making. I can't afford this NFT art at this level, but I still want to have an NFT. So let me go find something that can allow me to still feel like I'm in the game. Yeah. All right? I'm going to pay 50 for this one, 100 for this one, 1,000, whatever I can afford. I can't pay 100K, but I could pay 5K. I could pay 500. I could pay $5. Cool. So that's the whole argument for growing market share. That's yep. really what that's called in business. Like, typically, if somebody's number one and they're extremely dominant in the market, they're not always looking to monopolize and get rid of all competitors. To some extent, you begin to want competitors because they help grow the market share. Mm-hmm. So you stop trying to grow your company. You just try to grow the market because as the market gets bigger, it creates more space for you. Right. And more customers that allow for more growth. It's just like being Spotify, but you're where you are right now and nobody's close yet. What's the gap? A lot of people still aren't actually streaming mm-hmm. music. Yeah. Maybe 33% of the American population that's streaming music at this moment in terms of like being a part of a DSP and all, and all that. So with that being six, I remember it was only like four months ago. I asked my dad, um, about something on Spotify. He didn't know what Spotify was. And I just said it matter of factly. And then I had to educate him on Spotify. <laughs> they threw the whole conversation off. I'm like, I thought everybody knew what Spotify. I'm, you know, this, this is 2022. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it just started to click. And then you start looking at statistics. Still, everybody's not. Like most of the world um, is not on streaming platforms like yeah. that, right? Yeah. So you want, because it's a, it's a completely different behavior. You're still competing with old ways of consuming music. So you want to grow the idea of consuming music through that specific mechanism because the more people get used to that, now they're in the game and now I can say, hey, I'm better than them. Yeah. But if they're just against the idea together, then I can't do shit about it. That's a tall ladder to climb and it gets really expensive. Yeah. So you start to want competitors. But that same idea is why what you said, right? When there's somebody at the top Right. Yes, the, there are these elitists and other people that you're com, uh, competing with, but there's still going to be an entire marketplace that doesn't like the art, doesn't connect whatever whatever culture subsect mm-hmm. that is, can't afford whatever they're offering, yeah. and that's where you come in. He's like, "Hey, yeah, I'm better than X, Y, and Z because of this," or "I know you're missing this." It's just it becomes marketing messaging, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, NFTs, like. You know, they they got uh I don't want to use that word, but they they got exploited, and we already knew that was gonna come. The period of time where people had to take a step back, mm-hmm. but slowly but surely, the value still gonna come back, and people need to put it in the right frame of reference. Though, so, uh, it's it's not gonna be the the thing that people thought it was. I don't even want to get into speculating what it's gonna be because I want to get to this next topic that's 